In context to the season, we've been in a teaching called In the Beginning. And we've been talking about biblical beginnings. This is something that's so important. And I want you to start taking notes now before I start waxing strong. Um, beginnings are a part of life, but, and they always happen. There is no such thing ever as never having a beginning. And here's why. Jesus describes himself as Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and the ending. So as long as you are alive, you will always have, lift your hands and say, a beginning. You know, I love the fact that I'm not Muslim. Sometimes I want to convert, Dre Dre, and sometimes I want to go over to other places, but I would never serve a God that didn't give me the room to start over. And I love a God that is open to my starting over and to him starting over with me and starting over in me. Because I'm prone to error, say yes. And I'm prone to flaw, say yes. I'm prone to mistake, say yes. Anybody that doesn't think that they can get it wrong is deceived. If you can get it wrong, you're going to need a new beginning. Talk back to me. If, if, if you can... If you can overlook something, you're going to do What do you think grace is about? The entirety of the book of Romans is about getting it right with God through grace because you need a new start. And one of the things Lucifer likes to do, forgive me for calling him that, Satan likes to do, <laughs> one of the things he likes to do is punitively punish people by making them feel like no matter what you do, you can't undo what you did. mm 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 but then when you serve a God, hallelujah, that is capable and able of redeeming days and redeeming time and, 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 and it, down to the, here, Barbara, down to changing your mind, you can start over. Would you slap three people and say, you can start over. You can start over. I said three. I said three. You can start over. You need one more, Gertrude. You can start over. That's what repentance is about. Hallelujah. That's what worship is about. Glory to God. I know y'all don't like praise that much, but that's even what praise is about. It's, it's, it's about processing the soul into what to do and conditioning the heart and the mind about what I need when I'm starting over. Don't nobody want no surgery without anesthesia. And, 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 and so when God is working on me and when God is dealing with me, I've got to praise yeah. So my dancing is a matter of therapy. It's not just foolery and theatrics and, and circuses. It's that I'm trying to help myself process how God is starting something over in me. When I'm running, I'm not just doing theatrics and acrobatics around the church. I could go to LA Fitness for that. What I'm doing is I'm trying to remind myself that I can get through whatever is before me because God is, lift your hands and say, starting me over. Dre Dre, here's the issue before I get to my text. It's going to be Genesis 6, but before I get to my text, when we're talking about in the beginning, uh, um, grandbaby, what I've learned is you start over at 20, 30, 40, I heard 50. I don't even know what 60 feel like. I'm a little nervous. Now, low key, Kenza, I can't wait to get old. Now, pe people say that I don't need an excuse to say what I want, but I, <laughs> I almost like I'm eager to get to the place where I'm in a rocking chair and prophesy, you know. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a senile seer. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say whatever I want to everybody, yo. It's going to be bad. So anyway, uh, but there are starting overs that are part of the seasons and the cycles of life. Write this down if you're taking notes. I'm going to try to teach you today. Life is about seasons and cycles. Seasons and cycles. You'll never get life if you don't get seasons because God don't think in days. God plans, prepares, postures for seasons. Say seasons. Say seasons. You have to understand seasons. This is a season in your life. Your neighbor needs some encouragement. I don't want to shout uh, just yet. I got a little bit to go. But will you slap your neighbor real fast and just say, it won't be like this all the time. Just...
I don't like that neighbor. Slap the other one and say, it won't always be like this. I promise. Hey, glory. I'm sorry. It won't always. I promise you. I promise you it, it's going to change. So life is about seasons. There was a season in your life that you didn't know who you were. There was a season in your life when you didn't know who you were going to be. There was a season in your life where you were insecure, uncertain, indefinite. There was a season in your life where you needed something that you don't need right now. But now there's a season where you need something that you don't understand fully. And there's a season in your life where your friendship type, because we only think that our type I'm talking good. We only think that we have a romantic type. Nah. You got a relational type. You got an environmental type. You got a personality type. So your types are also explicit and expressive of the season that you're in. Your season can change your type. You should not want what you wanted when you were 12. I got a different type because I grew up. I wish I had somebody... <laughs> seasons now here's the other issue the other issue of beginnings is cycles cycles i don't like treadmills <laughs> i used to do bodybuilding and all that stuff and um that was easy work don't make me run in the same place why won't y'all talk back to me it is is it, it, it it leads me to my mind too much. There's not enough music that can change my feelings on it. I can't listen to nothing because it's just something about running in place. Can't get with it. Can't do it. But life also is about cycles. Deep breath. Something came after your mama that's looking for you. Come on. I'm trying to teach you life. Something came after your daddy that thinks it has a right to you. It's got on a different outfit, a different uniform. It's using different language, but it's been after you since before you were you. And the real truth is I bear the burden of helping you understand that what you're facing is not your fault. It's just come after you because it's always been looking for you. And if you don't understand seasons and if you don't understand cycles, you'll never get the victory in your potential, in your destiny, in where you're going. Lift your hands and say, I receive. Now slap somebody who needs encouragement and say, come out of that cycle. Will you just... Mm, 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 mm. Bankruptcy, you can have it homelessness you can have it depression and denial you can have it i am opting out of the cycle motorcycle bicycle i don't want no cycle that makes me stay in the same place but Life is going to be about, I'm about to preach to you, you got to eat baby. You, life is going to be about how you manage seasons and cycles. Elder Kimmy, I submit this. Um, I've got a text, I do, and I'm not going to be very long. I, I, I promise you I'm not. I hate the way people treat divorcees. It's almost like if you ain't ever been married, why do you have an opinion about? Ain't nobody loved you enough to link to you. And, and yet you got a judgmental opinion. When I look at bylaws of denomination, I'm going to get in trouble. Y'all, I know, I know. You know I'm a TikTok favorite. Hey guys. <laughs> All right, dog. Um, I don't like how people treat in the body of Christ divorcees. Your marriage ain't my business. 
it worked or it did not work. I need to worry about my own life. And, and, and what, so people have their own stories and their own lines that go on. But in the church, we establish judgments and designations. And I've ministered to women and men who have been severely penalized because a relationship did not work. But when it don't work, move on with your life. It's okay. There is therefore now no... I'm preaching something this morning. I was not going to preach this, but what I was going to preach is something called new creatures. Because if any man be in Christ, he is and all things. I'll get back there. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. So we're, at, um, we're going to talk today about this subject matter. The title of my message this morning is Giants and Floods. Write that down. <laughs> I'll be out your way in a well. Giants and floods. Giants and floods. Giants and floods. Giants and floods. Because whenever there is, watch this, a hard reset of God, you're going to have to deal with a monster and a water. I've done my study. I know what I'm talking about. Giants and floods. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6 very br briefly. Verses 1 through 11 in the Amplified. I'll read and I'll get out your way. What is it giving today? Something smothered, right? No? A little bit? I was, I was just about to say oxtail. It's going to be good. <sighs> Genesis 6. Everybody, I, I bless your powerful name. Everybody that's at Genesis 6, say yes. yes. Genesis 6, verse 1, in the Amplified Version. Now it happened when men begin to multiply on the face of the land. You would think that when men were multiplying, there would be no issue of monsters. Sometimes in your season of success, it's going to also be your greatest season of attack. Listen to me. Attack is not a sign that something went wrong. Attack is a sign that something has multiplied. Daughters were born to them, and the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they choose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not strive or remain forever with man, because he is indeed flesh. The Amplified says, sinful and corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall be yet 120 years. But there were Nephilim, men of stature, giants, notorious men. And on the earth on those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to their children, these were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown, great reputation and fame. Real quick, I'm not a good whisperer. People, people have told me for years when I try to whisper, it don't work. When, just whisper to your neighbor real quick and say, be careful who you sleep with. <laughs> the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were evil continually. The Lord regretted that he made mankind on the earth and he was deeply grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy, annihilate mankind whom I've created from the surface of the earth. Not only man, but the animals and the crawling things and the birds of the air. Because it deeply grieves me to see mankind's sin and I regret that I've made them. But Noah found favor and grace. Natala kosetia tarisha in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations, the family history of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who was just and had right standing with God, blameless in his generation. Noah walked, lived in habitual fellowship with God. Now Noah became the father of three sons. Father, help me to preach this real quick in Jesus' name. Amen. The history of the human race and the events that have molded us can be categorized by eras. And when I say era... I mean, uh, moments in history that are 
notated by certain things, the civil rights movement, the Holocaust, the you know, periods in history that we remember things by. And uh, when we think about those eras, we think about events and information and technology and ingenuity, and it advances the narrative of how we are and how we live as humans. Traditionally, when we review Genesis chapter 6 through the lens of catastrophe, we don't see the, the logic or the thought process of God. I do not think that the way this is translated is totally uh, congruent to what was going on in God's heart. I do not think God was saying, I regret making a man. Okay, so let's do some theological work. I think what he was conveying in his heart and in his language was, this kind of man can't rule this kind of world. Mm. He was not saying, I want all men to die, because if all men died, he'd have no family. And his original intent was what may? Family. And so because of that, what he was doing was, and this is going to be a very key component to understanding what I'm saying today, a hard reset. He was, I had a Sega Genesis. I had a Super Nintendo. I had a PlayStation. What's them things that you carried in your hand, mommy? A Game Boy, I had all of them. And and I had Elder Jasmine. I used to have to do (laughs) to the to the to cartridges to my favorite Dre Dre was Sonic the Hedgehog. You can't help I used to like Mario Brothers and all that stuff. But there was something powerful about resetting it. You you if, if something went wrong. If something malfunctioned, if something was not connecting, if there was an electronic malfunction, if there was a a technical malady, you push the reset button. Our problem is we don't exactly know how to discern, understand, or decipher what God does when he decides it's necessary that I reset. I'm about to press this button real hard. He was never trying to kill the human race. He was trying to start over And what he tried to do through and in Adam, he did through Noah. Because Eden, I show you a mystery, was akin to the ark. And then the ark was akin to the ark of the covenant. Study it on your own. What I'm trying to express to you is that God always presses a button where he's like, all right, this era ain't got my will. This era ain't got my way. This era ain't got my purpose and my plan. So what I'll do is I'll restart over. But here is where it gets complicated, Prince. He always starts over with a person. It's the craziest thing in the world. He he, he picks a flawed, hallelujah, a broken, uh, a confused, uh, 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 a weak person and says, I'm starting over with you. I got evidence in the Bible that every period in history was started by somebody just as broken as you are. You're not the first person with the problem that you got. You're not the first person with the issue that's before you. You're not the first person with a family crisis or a health crisis or a money crisis. Lift your hands and say, I'm not the first and I'm not the worst. Open your mouth say, I'm not the first and I'm not the worst. He starts over with whoever is willing. He starts over with whoever is yielded. He starts over with whoever will bow and not break. But God is the God that will always start over. This narrative is really weird and I'll give you a couple principles and I'll leave you alone. I feel like some tuna salad or something too. Um, I, I, I want to talk to you about perversion. Abnormality. Things that go against human law. Things that, that, that defy uh, scientific structure and makeup. The sons of God had no business laying with the daughters of men. 
<laughs> and if you did not know, Dr. Dupree, uh, a, a, a part of what the sons of God means biblically, theologically, is these were angelic beings that had rightful Rome on planet Earth. Now, I don't have time to teach you that planet Earth was never supposed to be our intended destination. We are here as a permanent rebuke to Satan. Our original intent was heaven, period. Earth was created as a punishment for Lucifer. It was a jail, which is why we rule over it. I'll get there later. So, um, so, so, so you got these, no, just please guys, please just. just. So you got, you got this issue now, and I'm not talking about six foot five, six foot eight, seven foot three, I'm talking about abnormal human beings called Nephilim. I don't know when it started, how it started, why it started, but if you are a student, listen to these principles and possibilities. It teaches me that angels have reproductive organs. Huh. So it also teaches me that I don't know how many demons or devils exist. It also teaches me that when God says in Genesis, I promise you I'm not a heretic. It also teaches me that in Genesis when God says replenish, I want to know what was there before then. Because if you got to read, just things to consider. And so, so, so we got this issue of monsters things that should not have been and they are running and they are trying to rule the earth these are called giants say giants uh my mother will tell you other people that have grown up with me will also tell you i was a childhood wrestling fan i absolutely loved every saturday morning it was it was given to tonka yokozuna it was given hulk hogan it was given my ultimate favorite Undertaker, it was given, it was given, it was given Big Van Vader, it was given, it was given all, it was given Monday Night Raw, I didn't like WCW, I preferred WWF, and then they went to WWE, and they, you know, went that way, it was given SummerSlam, it was given all of that stuff for me. There was a wrestler named Andre the Giant. <laughs> And he suffered in his physical body and physical frame with being able to move around. And, and he died, obviously, very young because of his condition. So when we think about the concept of giants, I want you to deanimate what that would feel like and look like in this room. Somebody 12 foot tall come walking in here, all of us going to whisper. Somebody 13 feet tall come in here, we're going to be like, the blood of Jesus. We just go. <laughs> Somebody gonna growl. It's, it's gonna be. I know all nations. All nations is me, and I'm on it. I know how it works. We gonna cut, 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 cut. We gonna bind something. We gonna find something to bind. That's all nations. But you got this issue now of a reset of God, but the opposition of a giant, something bigger than what exists. I want you to understand that if God is doing a reset in your life, one of the ways he does it is by putting something bigger than you in front of you. You don't hear me. You will never face something your size if something is supposed. If you don't believe me, ask David. <laughs> Hard reset and here comes Goliath. If you're going to go into something bigger, you got to face something bigger. You got to be willing to stand in front of something that you feel intimidated by, measured by, smaller than. You got to handle a giant if you're going to handle a Genesis. Thank you for all three of you that clapped. The issue is we don't know how to handle and how to manage when something feels bigger than us. 
We don't know what to do and what to meditate on when we feel smaller than it. Because here's a real issue. Our Facebook posts are not really realities. There are some things that are standing before us that we feel smaller than. We're like, I could never do that. And I could never be of that. And I could never achieve of that. And I could never go there. And I could never handle that. And I could never do all of that. And while we are on there, you know, making all of these inspirational, most motivational quotes and all of that stuff, meanwhile, we got a giant. But what my Bible teaches me, I love your word, giants come down very easily. I'll shout when I get home. <laughs> all I need is a few rocks. That's all I need. And a giant will scream, lift your hands and scream, down. I don't care what giant is in front of you. Find you some rocks. It might be the word. It might be prayer. It might be fasting. It might be the fivefold. Maybe you need an apostle. Maybe you need a prophet. Maybe you need a pastor. All you need is a rock. Giants walk, Travi. Giants talk. Giants taunt. And in this particular issue, God is like, I need to have another kind of man. Glory to God. Will you just touch your name and say, you got to be a different kind? No. Look at somebody else and say, you got to be a different kind. I fooled around Gertrude and did a study of this. And a part of what I found out was that God was into species. This is why he instructed Noah to have different categories of animal and different types of it. And when he started talking about it, this means that all of us are not the same. We're not the same kind of us. <laughs> My son, he, you know, he, he cool now and he tall and all that stuff. A couple of years ago, there was a song that came out, uh, Senator Ashley, that he would always say, I'm different. Yes, I'm different. Will you just slap your neighbor and say, I'm different. I'm different. Oh, no, 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 no. They didn't hear you. I open your mouth. Tell them I'm different. Now, now watch this. I'm different and I want to be. And I'm different and I like to be. And I'm different and I was called to be. And I'm different and I'm supposed to be. And I'm different and I was born to be. And I'm different and I was meant to be. And I'm different and I'll die different. I will never be you. Lift your hands and scream different. We have no doctrine. For difference we don't have a lot of Bible for difference so now these are giants and giants are walking around and here goes the eyes of the Lord because they're always roaming to and fro throughout the earth brief seminary class seminary lesson the book of Job is probably the oldest book of the Canaanized Bible and, and, and so we know from that pattern and from that angle that there were angels that ro walked, they roamed, they went in and out of the counsels of God and they did things. It's just, it, this is why the Bible says that your adversary, the devil, walks around. He's, he's practicing. He's, he's perpetrating his, his, his angelic habitat, his, his former status, his former behavior. And so now we got this issue where we've got Angels probably walking around, sleeping with the daughters of men, conceptualizing Nephilim. Study it on your own because I don't want to go on TikTok. Uh, um, not this week. I can't do it. All right, um, and they're giving birth to these unusual animals. All of us are not calls or called to face the same thing. Be careful how you handle my battle. We're not all called to face the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You probably couldn't have been a Noah because you scared of dogs. <laughs> you probably couldn't have been a Noah. I, don't, I frankly don't like cats. I hate cats. I don't like them. Now, I love lions, but you, I don't like them kitty litter, licking yourself. Something about them, I just... I can't do it. I, I, you know, I prefer dogs named Brodus and Deoji. And I, my mom, my mama got me a Rottweiler when I was younger. We called him Hennessy. It was, it was a dog, you know. <laughs> I like dogs. I don't like cats. So, 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 so you, you can barely face 
those type of species. But imagine facing something that is supernaturally constructed to defy who you are. Built purposefully to be bigger than you. Will you just prophesy with me? This is the only time you get to be a part of the prophetic team. Tell your neighbor right now, you were built to fight what's bigger. Look at somebody else say, you were built to fight what's bigger. The eyes of the Lord go throughout the earth, and here he finds a heart. I feel like speaking with tongues. Here he finds a decision. Here he finds a lifestyle. Here he finds a commitment. Here he finds a choice, and the name of that choice, and the name of that decision, and the name of that lifestyle is Noah. And he looks at Noah and decides by measurement, I think you're the guy that can stand up in a moment like this in history when I'm doing a reset. When I'm trying to start over, I need somebody like you. Now listen, I'm not trying to be petty. We don't all have the same hearts. Different people want different things. And different people pursue different things. But when God finds a heart, Lord have mercy. And when God finds a mind and when God finds a soul that's willing to do and be what others are not willing to do and be, he selects them and he puts them against that that is bigger. That that is strange. So your circumstance and your scenario is a part of your destiny. If you are a part of something bigger, stronger, stranger, it's because God sees you like he saw Noah. He looked at you and saw something in you that's like, if I'm going to restart anything, a family line, a bloodline, a, a name, a, a era, a ministry, a purpose, a pattern, a paradigm, let me find another Noah. Will you just slap somebody and say, another Noah? Open your mouth, say another Noah. I believe God is in a season where he's looking for another Noah. I believe he's looking for somebody that's going to be willing to hear it differently, build it differently, work it differently, walk it differently, say it differently, even in the face of the giants. God starts over and he allows giants to train those that are supposed to be the catalyst stand in front of what's taller than you jesus wasn't as tall as his cross study it on your own giants are all throughout the bible i know what i'm talking about and so this is the, this 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 has to happen now we got this other issue scream preach <sighs> how do you conceptualize saying what nobody else is saying how do you conceptualize preaching what nobody else is preaching i'm talking about in the beginning how do you conceptualize the pain of having to pioneer a point that nobody has ever had to prove before no it's gonna rain it's gonna rain it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Noah's on a fast. God says it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Now here is the issue. God calls people like you and I in moments when he's doing something opposite from what he did before. <laughs> it's in moments when he's doing a new thing. Well, you just encourage your neighbor. They're falling asleep. They want some sunflower seeds. And tell them he's doing something new. Just say he's doing something new. <laughs> And because he's doing something new, he's going to use you. Whenever God is doing something new, he needs a you. Water had never come. Got a little carried away. Forgive me. Water had never come from the heavens. Water had come from the earth. And when God decided he was going to flip the script, he had to look for somebody who was vulnerable enough, willing enough, 
to do it even when they are afraid. All right, now this could break out into deliverance. I don't want this to. Please obey me. Slap three people and say, do it scared. Just, I said three, do it scared. Do it scared. Obey me. No, your neighbor really needs to hear that. They're trying to act cool, calm, and collective. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. This is the season when you got to do it afraid. Do it scared. I know you're nervous. Do it. I know you're shaking. Do it. I know you're anxious, but do it when you're scared. Do it! Candace, don't look at me in that type of voice. Do it scared. Do it scared. It, it felt like this, Vontae. If I'm Noah, Noah's like, I heard something, but I don't know what it means. I heard something, but I don't know how to define it. I heard something, and I have no reference point for it. I heard something, and I've never seen it before. Yay! I've heard something, and it ain't happened before. How in the world am I supposed to spend my life? I'm almost 600 years old. Here's the other issue. Most of us want the promise to be fulfilled at 31 and 32. What if you had to live to 600? Will you slap your neighbor and say, it is not too late? I wish I had three people with the Holy Ghost that wasn't in a rush for the revelation. That wasn't in a rush for the fulfillment. It's coming to... Noah was not a spring chicken when he started building. He was not 18 getting a driver's license. He was several centuries years old and here you are fussing and crying because you're 40 and 30 and 50 and you feel unfulfilled but I prophesy to you, you will never get older in your life. You're going to get wiser, yay, stronger, better, smarter, Shout hallelujah. Six hundred and building. Several decades and building. Several centuries and building. I'm trying to get to my next point, but help me preach and just slap your neighbor and say, it's not over. It's not over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell them it's not over. A few more giants few more complications but it's not over what do I feel you are coming out of your age crisis Ooh. Um, the devil loves to mess with people about how old or how young they are he loves to get in their mind, Benny, about how what they are and what they can't do and what they don't know. But I'm a 600-year-old man, and I'm still strong. And I'm still building, and I'm still hearing, and I'm still living life in obedience. Listen, because with regret comes disobedience. Had Noah despised his age, he would have disobeyed. Anyway... He starts building and God starts using, lift your hands and scream this word real loud, language. Because that's the power of prayer, the power of devotion, the power of the secret place is that God gives you a life glossary. I'm going to talk to you like I don't talk to nobody else. It's going to be direct. It's going to be specific. It's going to be native to you. Ain't nobody heard no term, rain. Now, if I were God and I'm not... Yeah, it's coming off today. If I were God and I'm not, who do you think I would have talked to about rain? Adam. Adam was apparently or allegedly or supposedly the first man. I'd have told him this is how this is going to work. Adam never knew rain from up. He knew watering from down. The Bible says that it would water from the ground. He chooses a whole different guy and starts talking to him differently. God ain't talking to you like he's talking to your neighbor. 
God ain't saying to you what he's saying to your neighbor. So when you try to relate and connect to them based upon what God is saying to them, you're going to always miss it. This is why it's best to just learn how to be a support. Now, I'm going to get there a lot later. Let me go on sabbatical. you got to learn how to be supportive. And what I'm learning about Christians, there are people that tongue talk and don't know how to be there and don't know how to show up and don't know how to understand what they can understand. I know. I understand. So the, it's going to rain. I'm praying. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm fasting. And God says, it's going to rain. Now, listen to me. When you're in a season of new beginnings, God's going to tell you to say what you ain't never said. Well, you, something is going to happen to your mouth. I've been under pressure lately to look in the mirror after I brush my teeth and say things about myself. Noah probably woke up and said, it's going to rain. I don't care if they believe it or not. I don't care if they hear it or not. I'm going to tell you what the enemy is after. Your declarations over yourself. I command you in the name of Jesus to disciple that tongue. Get them tonsils under order and start saying what God said. Say, because you're preparing yourself and you're probably going to prepare a people. Get your mouth in order. It's going to rain. Oh, God, I feel it. It's going to rain. Mm. It's going to rain. Noah is like, well, what are clouds? He's like, don't worry about it. It's going to rain. Noah's like, well, ha- is it going to ha- happen like the river? No, it's going to rain because Noah learned the ocean and he learned the flood and he learned all of that, but he never heard it drop before. So God taught Noah what rain is before other people knew it. I have suffered the injury, Jaylen. You look so beautiful, sweetheart. I have suffered the injury and the trauma of being the first to catch a thing, being ahead of the thing. It's not fun. Y'all like that stuff. Y'all like, oh, I was the first. Nah, bruh. Um, I suffered what it was to be ahead of the game. And Noah was definitely ahead of the game. Because when you say what ain't been said, people think you're crazy. When you say what ain't been said, people think you're losing it. When you say what ain't been said, people abandon you. Because if Noah started preaching and saying, it's going to rain, everybody's like, give him an intervention. He need a nap. Let's all walk away. Let's start a mini arc. Forgive me. So Noah's preaching this and the Bible says it was counted unto him as righteousness. He started preaching this and nobody believed him. What are you willing to do when nobody believes you? I'm going over here because y'all not being on it. There's going to be something that you have to do that you're not going to have many people to cheerlead you. But thanks be unto God that there's about a hundred of us in here that don't need the pom-poms no more. Don't need the cheerleaders no more. We tried to do the future with the fans. I'm working in here. And it didn't get us nowhere. Noah had no fans. There was no t-shirt that said rain. He didn't have mugs. There was no bumper sticker. All he had was what was in his mouth. And he had to endure the isolation of being ahead of the game. And he had to endure the persecution of being ahead of the game. And he preached and he preached. And then the rain came. But here is the way God trained him in the beginning. You know how to coexist and wrestle among giants. Now you got to learn how to build things. Because your greatest battle weapon is not what you say, it's what you build. Will you look at somebody and say, I'm going to build it. I'm going to build it. I try to imagine Prophet Stephanie. I'm a little lazy now. I got some physical activity that I do, but I'm, if I were 600 or so, I'm not walking up and down no mountains gathering wood and will you will you be honest and I'm not building nobody's boat I'm I'm barely mowing my lawn child I'm not trying to like and yet somehow he finds the motivation to build something in that season of his life 
in that age in his life. And he builds something for the purpose of multiplication. Because everybody that God calls to build, God calls to build them to multiply. Take two of this, two of that, two of those, and let's go and let's build. All right? Another deep breath. The strategy that God gave Noah was very unique for the flood. And one of the first things, you're actually really good with this. One of the first things that God instructed Noah to do was compartmentalize. <laughs> he taught Noah how to put stuff where it belonged. And how not to let stuff cohabitate and bleed over unnecessarily. I'm in my text. He put these two together. Because imagine if the pigeons were with the lions. And if the lions were with the foxes. And if the foxes were with the deer. And if the deer were with the... They could not coexist. So what God taught Noah in his building phase in the day of the flood was put stuff where it belongs. Scream, put your weight on it. Everybody ain't your friend. Everybody ain't your sis. Everybody ain't your brother. Them being over 50 don't make you their mother. Them being over 60 don't make you their father. Them ordaining you don't make you the, your daddy. Them, them laying hands on you don't make you their mentor. You got to learn. I'm working in here. How to put stuff exactly where it belongs. And you could be stuck right now because you got lions living with bears on your body and you've not separated what needs to be separated so you can get through the flood in new beginnings giants and floods 40 whole days just flooding uh, unconventional, abnormal, irregular, brand new, unprecedented. And Noah has to be the one to navigate it. He's like a human compass. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry for you. I'm so sorry. Gertie, I apologize. Put your hand on your chest. Call me dramatic again. <laughs> Say, I am, I am a, human a human compass. compass. <laughs> they don't feel good to be the one that teach people how to steer. It's not always convenient to teach people where to go. And where to, because if you're like me, it's like if you fall... Who gonna be steering? Like you can't afford to. Yeah, y'all won't be honest. It just, it's like I'm so busy being there for you that I don't even know how to be there for me. But this is how God trains people for new beginnings. Can you handle the giants? And can you handle the flood? You will be overwhelmed while I start this thing over. You, you, you will experience, you will experience what it is to have abnormal atmospheres and environments, and you've got to navigate it through with a compass in your heart. Now, here was Noah's issue. Deep breath. Don't get triggered. Hopefully. Prayerfully. If you do, we got a couple of counselors or people in the room. Noah was never betrayed by an animal. A giant never uncovered him. You know who did it? His sons. Those that came from him took advantage of his nakedness. Now, I've said to you before, I will reiterate it again. Please stop calling Noah a drunkard. I don't like it. It's not technically true. He had, listen, you, 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 your mama gave you some Moscato at your prom. Shut up. It 
was not Noah's drunkenness, it was Noah's nakedness. God. That his sons took advantage of and used it probably because they wanted their own whatever. So because of that, you've got to be careful when you're building with who you're bare with. Yeah, it's quiet because every, every person that's building in the time of the giants and in the time of the floods, is, they're going to want a chance to just be Noah. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they don't get the right to just be Noah because everybody knows that they got to build an ark. And if you don't build an ark, they drown. And if you don't build an ark, they flood. If you don't build an ark, they don't reproduce. you got to understand what that is to do it. Now, I have a word for you, and I'm going to let you go. Because my taste buds, do y'all, you know, I've been struggling with some indecision lately. I don't, I don't know if I want barbecue or chicken or I don't know what I want. And then Kurt Franklin wrote this documentary. <sighs> Got me a little triggered up here. <laughs> um, when you're dealing with this issue of giants and floods and building, Part of what you have to do is be willing to sacrifice your right to be understood. You can't fight all the time to be heard. You, 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 these are penalties of pioneering. If you're going to be the first, you got to be willing to know, if I say this, it's not going to make sense. Slap your Post this on Facebook. <laughs> Slap your neighbor say, you don't make sense. Math ain't math and when I look at you. <laughs> you you're different in, in that particular way. But God uses giants and he uses floods as the classroom for anybody that needs to build something safe. To crab something that people can house and reproduce in. Now, I think what I'm looking at is people who just frankly didn't ask for this. I think I'm looking at people who would rather unanoint themselves. <laughs> yeah. Take this oil off my. But there is, in fact, a pressure designed for you. I hate to be the prophet of doom. There is also a pain designed for you. It's not always the devil that's training. It must have been painful being Noah. So when we read this, we go to Walt Disney, Alan, we're like, oh. Arabian night, like Arabian day. I can show you the world. We, we go real Disney. Um, but the real truth is, this was excruciating. You're laying in your bedroom, minding your own business. And the Holy Ghost says, rain. And you're like, I, I want some Starbucks, like... <laughs> I'd rather get me some Chipotle or something. And, and, and the Holy Ghost is like, tell them it's going to rain. Risk your reputation and tell them this. Lose your relationships and tell them that. <laughs> Move forward and sacrifice and start building now. I wonder what Noah's wife thought about him. I also wonder what the real motive behind his son's betrayal of him was. I wonder if they thought that he was insane because of what he had to see and say before they did. I'm talking about giants and floods. Now, I serve a God that walks on waters, so I am not afraid of the floods. Will you just look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid of the flood? Oh, I felt like that was prophetic. Tell another one, don't be afraid of the flood. 40 is the number of a generation. 
40 is the number of a generation. I think God allowed Noah to have school in something that was supposed to take out everybody like him. Not just who was alive. Whatever God is trying to do with you and for you and around you is not just about you. It's about everybody like you. So God's going to train you. And he's going to train you for giants, and he's going to train you with floods. It's going to be both. Start playing, Ben. Um, Noah goes down in history as a patriarch and one who kept righteousness because of what he said and what he built. In the days of Noah, giants were in the land. I've mentioned this before several years ago. I will reiterate it for the sake of your own study. It was not in the days of giants. Noah was in the land. It was in the days of Noah. Giants were in the land. Which meant that in the grand scheme of things, Noah was bigger than the giants. Had to have been. He had to endure. He had to last. (laughs) He had to navigate. He had to press. He had to persevere. You will be nothing like your mother. Gracie, I don't know what's happening or what's going on, but this picture, this model of mom, womanhood, and all that stuff that you are afraid of, giants and floods, baby, you'll be nothing like that. You won't put yourself to the back burner. You won't even... What am I looking... Your mother sacrificed two dreams things that she just gave up on. You won't have to bury your talents, bury your gifts. You will write. You'll also teach. I don't even know what that means, but you'll you'll stand and teach. The time will come. Just endure the season. And God will give you grace. Okay? And, And sisters will replace the wrong sisters. I see a, um, Jesus, I see a sibling wounding, a, a deep one. God wants you to know he's, he's going to minister to you in the place of sisterhood and even, and even big brothers. Something's going to come to surround your next steps. In 2024, you will grow. <laughs> You will grow. You will grow. Now you're going to get um, emails and you're going to get certain invitations from different states to come and work for places. And the Holy Spirit of God says to warn you. He's giving you some roots for a reason. This is the environment that your children need. God's doing something with your babies, all of them. Mm. He's moving in and out of their lives right now. Visitations, some of them are having visions of angels and beings and species. But you're in a season of giants and floods. Be at peace. Have no anxiety about Christmas. I don't know what the (laughs) heck, I don't know what that means. Have no... Have no anxiety about Christmas. Father, I bless. I speak shalom. I speak peace to every area surrounding her life and her body. In the name of Jesus. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. I'm waxing. Is this your son? Stand up, man. God's got a point to prove to you. Mommy, will you stand up? Put your hand on his heart, will you? 
God's got a point. I'm not going to embarrass you. God's got a point to prove to you. And the point that the Lord has to prove to you has everything to do with the decisions you need to make about what you believe, who you are, and where you're going. You've seen your mom's faith. You've seen her courage, but you've also witnessed her suffer. And because you've witnessed her suffer, it's caused a callousness upon your heart. God is trying to reach for you in the same way he reached for David, in the same way he reached for Noah. I'm sensing, the Lord told me even your name is prophetic. What is your name? Jalil. Your name is Jalil. Yeah. Interesting. You, you, you're going to be among those that fight and conquer and, and move forward. You have nothing to worry about with schools and peers. It looks like you're a gamer or something, and, and, and I see you in front of games playing, which it, that the Lord keeps showing me your thumbs, so I know you like to do that. But the, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he's listening to you, your thoughts, your fears, your plans. It's not just about getting away. It's about yielding to him. Father, thank you for what you're doing in his life. Thank you for how you're moving in his life. Thank you for what you purposed and what you planned him to be. Let no witch, no warlock, no plan succeed against him. Let him be found in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Pink, Pink, will you come? Prophetess, will you stand with me? Lift your hands, honey. Asana koru bayai. The name of it is infirmity. The plan of it is premature death. Prophesy. So we speak now to your body. We speak to your limbs and we command them to come alive in the name of Jesus. We speak now to the even the blood cells and everything in your, in your abdomen in the name of Jesus. And we command it to come alive in Jesus' name. We bind every demonic force from the crown of your head to the sole of their feet that is after, after uh, the attack. And we just speak the, uh, the word of the Lord over you right now. And we declare that you are healed and we declare that you are whole. We declare that you are set free and delivered from the from the chains of, of, of every demonic force that is coming after your destiny, coming after your future. We speak to the root of it. We speak to uh, uh, whatever this generational uh, attachment is to that is assigned to your last name and we command it to come up and out in the name of Jesus. And, and even now the Lord is saying that he is uh, healing your bloodline and even the people that come after you, your siblings, he is healing you even as you stand. Uh, whatever this cancerous disease is, the Lord says that he's just ripping it out of your bloodline and he says that the kingdom of God comes now to you the kingdom of God even comes alive in you in Jesus name and, and he said he's rooting out even from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet he said he's rooting out uh, the attachment uh, anything that you, you ventured into even this whatever this is regarding um, unforgiveness he says that he is allowing you and dealing with your memory and he's allowing your memory to be healed even the neurons and the things that are preventing you from creating new memories, creating uh, connected to that trauma. He said he's doing something in your brain now. You will remember uh, the, the goodness of the Lord and, and in replace of what the enemy has put there that you think you have a right to be in unforgiveness. He said he's been removing that out of you now and you will have new uh, re the regeneration of your brain cells are being uh, 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 re replenished now in your brain and he says it's going to do something to your body as you let go of these uh, the spiritual things that are attached to you say it's God he said he is healing you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in Jesus name in Jesus name come on begin to pray in the Holy Ghost will you yeah. Come on, big ho, 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 ho. Come on, 
and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You've been like, you've been like, you've been like the person left on the side of the road. Lift your hands, honey. He's going to visit you. Borderline homeless. Without much security about where you're going to live or where you're going to go next. You've been seeking for a decision. And there have been several gods, as it were, trying to claim you and, and, and tag you. And you don't know what to believe. You don't know if it's the universe. You don't know if you should go into a way of meditation. or The Lord Jesus has marked you. And he's claimed you for his own. And God says to tell you, he is going to provide for you in a way that you have not known before because of your level of faith. And whoever said whatever on Friday to you, honey, the Lord says God is true. Every man is a liar. I wish I had help. God is true. Every man is a liar. You will see God's hand, his provision, and his favor. I see a strange land. I see relatives in different places that you're trying to argue with and explain yourself to. And the Holy Spirit of God says, if you will settle your tongue, part of what the Holy Ghost is going to do is allow you re-entry into whatever you walked away from. School will be fine. Work will be fine. It's just taking some time to get you out of this depression. 16 months you've been in it. The Holy Spirit comes today to see about you personally. To see hope, oh, to see about you personally. I see a graveyard. The Lord wants you to come from off of that tombstone. You know of what I speak. You've been crying now uh, over this unsuspected loss. The Holy Spirit knows you heard about it. And he's there to comfort you, to guide you. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. I think I'm almost done. She's messing with me. Um, bring her. She's messing with me. She's messing with me. Lift your hands, baby. Miracles. You have the gift of miracles. You will find yourself not just in classrooms, but in your home, around your aunts, and even your grandmother. You will find yourself moving in miracles. Something is about to happen to your hands. Lift them up real high. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost hard, will you?
Negarum Eves Sibatulu Kupalia de la Pater, Eadian di Sidiki and Kurian Nena Matole Tur, Yebro di Nihio Dodilis, Yaganoridun de la Kutiria de la Nesia Tara. Come on, push me all the way in there, Ben. Metolanda la nio dole non sai kairi. E te peve pon si mi piki a karada hata vedere. Rege dara la bam 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 be. Hey, come on a little harder. Something's happening in the Holy Ghost. Ha! Like Philip, <laughs> Acts chapter eight. Yeah! Whoa! Oh! Done. Yeah! Hey, hey, promotion, 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 promotion. I see the spirit of promotion coming on you. Tie on you now. Promotion. Woo. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Vare di kudi ando la kutus mahatola mere. De, de, de asir. Mi fume pare montan durnu kupa apala tala da ardea. The spirit, the spirit of prayer will cloak your life in an unbelievable way this month. You will be locked away. You will be fasted. You will be silent. You will have no response. You will pray. And the reason you will pray is because God's trying to give you instructions. The power of prayer is about to violently hit your body. Lift your hands high. It's going to. It's going to. It's, there will be days and days. Whew, you need some too. I just loose this to you. Not in the name. giants and floods I feel the anointing of prayer it's coming it's coming don't worry about that boy it's coming it's coming it's coming come on let your hands begin to pray now it's happening Woo! Uh, oh, oh, your hands, your hands, your hands will bring you what your house needs. <laughs> your hands. Your hands will bring you what your house needs. It won't be work. It'll be your hands. Build. 
build, build, build. Mortgages, mortgages, mortgages. Everybody in the room, lift your hands. God's doing something right now with overturning bank decisions over homes. I don't know what I sense. I sense God breaking yokes off of mortgages. Pray in the Holy Ghost loud, will you? Come on. Oh, we can regulate this in the spirit. We ain't got to wait for them. We got him. Ho! Oh, I don't hear you yet. I don't hear you yet. I don't hear you. I know you're working, but you need something too, baby. I...
if if um, I, I sense something I'm done I, I sense something if people are on the floor leave them uh, there's a child Grayson and those babies back there God told me I don't know what this means or why this matters but he's giving miracle gifts to children yeah <laughs> if there if there is a child by you nearest to you this is weird but this is a prophetic church I'm sorry find that child and make circles around them will you touch them and begin to pray hard miracle gifts <laughs> miracle gifts touch them and begin to miracle gifts begin to pray oh yeah these mantles have not gone anywhere they're in the earth still come on let's begin to pray put your hand on them now oh yeah oh yeah there will be a reversal there will be cancellations there will be i said something's happening with babies now in the name of jesus come on start praying over them keep praying come on keep praying come here come on keep praying hard Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. He's here. He's here. Sagabai. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here.
just lift your hands and reverence him. We're going home. Uh. Oh. Let's reverence him. He's here. Oh. Reverence him. He's here. Father, we bless you for your strength being exhibited in this room. Your strength being exhibited in this room. Your strength to heal, to deliver, to restore, being made manifest. Open your mouth. Lift your hands, worship for a minute, will you? Like wind. Worship him, will you? Lift your hands. I don't hear you. Come on, just empty yourself just for a minute, will you? Come on. Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning for the demonstration of your might and your power. Uh, we thank you for the lightning, the thunder. Thank you for the rain, your visitation among us, your weight in the midst of us. We worship you. Like a wild man, 60 seconds, lift your hands and just begin to worship him with your mouth. Say something with your mouth. Say, hey, come on, say something with your mouth. Say something with your mouth. Say something with your mouth. Say, come on, open your mouth. Say something with your mouth. Yeah. Come on, say something with your mouth. Yeah. Come on, with your mouth, worship, 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 worship. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we're gonna do. Come on, lift it up, y'all.
worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. Yeah. That's what we are. Come on, sing. Into the holies, into the holies. Holy. That's where I wanna be. Woo! Mera la mana na 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 masina na na dele de de ti atara da gosa na re de he diana. Rina gana ni sene tando lo koba na na mana ndela bana ndola bote yambaro naya pere da da bana da di andande le kotolo no no ro no na masika mahane yere da da bana na na mana yando lo moro no na na ma bana na ma sekete pe o paro do ho shepe a yiri da da ba kata da ni Come on, just let's let it lift. Come on, just a little while longer. It's getting late, but just a little while longer. Shout unto him. 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 Oh yes, do it again, do it again, do it again, my God, do it again, do it again, do it again. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the Lord with that seed in great joy. To Him be all blessings, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Scream at the top of your lungs, so be it. <laughs> 